Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. Um, this is a collaborative effort between the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Mink Center for Leadership and, whoops, Business and Leadership, uh, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center Networks, and the um, Veterans Business Outreach Centers, um, all here um, federally affiliated programs here in the state of Hawaii. Um, I am Kathy Wiltsey. I'm the state director for the Hawaii SBDC. And um, I'm here today to share with you um, some success stories of businesses, particularly from our Oahu Center. We have very many success stories. And at, um, later on, we'll talk a little bit about where you can see some more of those. Today, we're going to feature three to four, depending on how much uh, our discussion leads us, uh, keeps us on or off track. So um, with me today is uh, Joe Burns, the Oahu Center Director. And he is going to be here to share several uh, stories regarding um, successful clients that we've worked with over the past year. Um, just to start off, Joe, can you tell us a little bit about what the SBDCs do and the types of, of businesses that, that we talk to? Certainly, Kathy, and good morning, and good, good morning, morning everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for having us on the show today. So just by way of explanation, the SBDC is a federal state partnership that has been in Hawaii for about 28 years now well-established program, and probably the best way to think of us is like a management consulting firm, because what we do is work individually with companies to help them improve their performance, whether it's financial import, uh, performance, you know, getting money into the company through loans or private equity, uh, or improving their sales and marketing, their people management. This is what we do on a one-to-one -one basis with, with companies. And we're part of a, a larger uh, SBDC network uh, throughout the uh, United States. There's roughly 1,000 offices uh, and roughly 5,000 employees. So we have a lot of resources that we can draw on to help our clients. And then for Hawaii, of course, we have uh, neighbor island offices. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're on a neighbor island, uh, definitely look for the SBDC and they can help you. But we're focused uh, pretty much strictly on, on Oahu uh, here. Um, we have some training, we have some workshops, uh, we cooperate with a lot of other organizations, not only the ones that you just introduced, uh, but some other ones. Notably, right now, we're doing some things with DBED um, through an SBA grant for exporting, which is the high step program that's going on now. The last few years that's gone on. So mm -hmm. we're into a lot of different things, uh, but it's all really focused on helping our clients to succeed, whether they're startup businesses or whether they're you know, established for a couple years or even well established. We have probably something that we can do for pretty much, pretty much everyone. Great. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, one other thing that came to my mind was um, we didn't really mention the federal contracting piece. Right. So it, it, maybe you can explain a little bit about that. It's recently um, been an uptake in a new, uh, a new venture right. for the SBDC. Right. So uh, I did not neglect. I did not mention that. <laughs> I didn't neglect to say that. But we have just recently started with the Hawaii PTAC, um, which is the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, and the focus of the PTAC is a similar kind of one-on-one -on -one focus, but to help clients position themselves and be able to sell to the government, whether it's services or goods, and whether it's federal, state, or county and local governments, because as you know, that's not necessarily an easy process. You can't just walk in and mm -hmm. basically do a deal. Right. So there's a lot of things that need to go before that. 
in terms of registering, signing up, and uh, being approved to sell. So we have uh, uh, one person on staff now under the PTAC and shortly another person to be able to help companies to do that. And it's a really good model because if someone is working with us and they wish to take advantage of this, they can do so right under the same roof uh, and we can help them with other parts, let's say their financial management or their capability statement. They don't have to go to another organization or another place. It can all be done under one roof. And this model is something that works in probably 25 other SBDC slash PTAX around the mm -hmm. around the country. Great. So thanks for bringing that up. I totally yeah, no forgot. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since I was just at a recent activity for that, it was top of mind for me. So thanks for sharing. Um, so to do our business at hand today, um, one of the things I wanted to um, highlight for the audience is the types and the variety of businesses that um, we deal with. And um, we can talk more about that a little bit later. But I know that one of the, the firms that we were going to feature today is an architect. Can you tell me a little bit more of the help we did with that client? Sure. And you know, a lot of these are ongoing, too. It's mm -hmm. not a necessarily always a, a one-time deal right right so we're still working with this company but um, this client uh, was working in an architectural firm for quite some time a prestigious firm he became the operations manager and a partner uh, but a certain part of the business the, the company didn't want to do anymore so they asked him to take it and he took it and, and left and started his own practice because there was certainly enough business and his name was well known enough to do that uh, and that part was fine but the part that uh, we had to help with was the business aspects of that endeavor because he had never run a business before mm -hmm. he didn't have to worry about accounting or human resource management right. or you know, paying GET or any of those kinds of things that a business has to do. That was all taken care of for him. So uh, what we did initially was to help him get a line of credit because as you can imagine, you incur a lot of costs before you're gonna see any money of getting paid. Right. He had to pay his people by the time they invoiced and by the time they got paid, it could be 45 to 60 days. So he needed a line sure. of credit. And he had talked to a local bank, and right in the middle of that process, that loan officer abruptly left the bank. Oh, no. So he was kind of hanging, and he couldn't get them to do anything. So fortunately, I knew someone at a different bank, introduced him to that person who was happy to help, and in a short time, they got their line of credit. Part of that process was doing some financial projections. Mm -hmm. Again, that's not something that this person was familiar with, so right. we built out a five-year projection based on the numbers in terms of what he thought he was gonna be doing, uh, and then looking at the costs and the expenses. And of course, the bank would use this in their underwriting process. So that's something we can help people with across the board is as part of a business plan or standalone, the bank is gonna to wanna to see okay, what are you going to use our money for and how are you going to pay us back? Mm -hmm. So this is a helpful part of the underwriting process. Sure. So we helped him with that and then uh, happily he got his, his line of credit. It's since been increased. Um, and then along those lines, uh, he didn't have a good way to capture his numbers. He started using spreadsheets, which a lot of people do. It's better than a, you know, a box of receipts on the floor. <laughs> Um, but it's not as good as a, as a financial management system such as you would have in QuickBooks or Xero. So we helped him get set up on QuickBooks and I was I have been working with his office manager to make sure that they can produce the financial results, not only for them internally, but mm -hmm. also for the bank or any sure. other third party that might be interested in, in seeing those numbers. And uh, they've been doing some really good projects. He's hired uh, five full-time people initially. Great. And looking at a couple more, maybe by this time he's already hired those, those two more. So, you know, this was a case of uh, helping someone with uh, the business side of their, of their endeavor uh, that's worked out really, really well. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's an important note for the audience is that many um, small business owners, especially when they're first starting, um, may be very good at what they do, but that does not mean that they will be good at running a business. There's so much more to it, so I'm very happy you pointed that out. Right, and 
you know, you can't blame people that don't have a background in financial management. Of maybe course. they didn't go to school for it, or maybe they don't even like numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know people like that, but we feel it's important for them, for them to have a basic knowledge of what they're doing, even if they hire somebody else to, to, to do their numbers internally or externally so that they know what these numbers are telling them mm -hmm. and that they can speak with some confidence to, let's say, a lender or an investor. Mm -hmm. So that's an important point. Um, I noticed in the um, success story, oh, and I should mention at this point, too, um, all of these success stories that we're talking about today, and in fact, many, many more that we've dealt with over the years, appear on the SBDC website. So that is www.hisbdc.org. I have to say that very distinctly. Um, but uh, so if, if people are interested in more details, but would you mind um, reading the, the quote that is in that success story? Well, um, it's a little bit embarrassing because it's about <laughs> me, so, but since you asked me, uh, this, this client said, uh, we are blessed to have many strategic resources in our startup. The SBDC and Joe are the most strategic of all. Joe's deep knowledge and operating, knowledge of operating a business was a necessity for our company to get off the ground in its inaugural year. Finances, bookkeeping, organization, compliance, and training were among the key aspects of Joe's consultations. Without his help, we would be in startup mode for years instead of months. And that was really kind. That was really a nice statement. So, you know, we love to see the people who are successful, and we like hearing how we, we mm -hmm. help them, which is why we do this kind of work. And it's really fulfilling and, and fun to, to see a quote like this. So mm -hmm. thank you for asking me to, to read it. <laughs> I didn't think you'd go there on your own. So <laughs> setting aside the blush factor, it's, not, it's very good you, that you shared that. Um, were there any other things on that client that you wanted to discuss? Uh, I don't think so, except that if we don't hear from clients in a certain amount of time, especially somebody active, we'll try to reach out and let them know that we're still here in case they have something. And then a lot of times we'll just say, could you please send in your uh, financial information for the quarter so we can look at it. Maybe you missed something or maybe you didn't look at it <laughs> and maybe there's something that we can see. <laughs> Uh, I should also stress at this point, as, as you know, uh, everything that we do is, is strictly confidential. Our funding comes from the SBA on the federal side, and they're very uh, vigorous about making sure that any information that we get from clients is uh, strictly confidential and, and well protected. Mm -hmm. So people have confidence to share the, that information with us. So mm -hmm. we do go back sometimes to to see how people are doing on a regular basis, and if something has you know, popped out that they might not have noticed, you know, we can pursue that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can be confusing, I think, to clients at some point. Um, if we're actually um, talking about them on TV and posting them on our website, um, we actually have their permission. Yes, is that we do. Correct? Right. They have to sign a release to make sure that it's okay. And sometimes we'll, we'll do an article, let's say, in Pacific Business News, and absolutely we have to sign a release to make sure that they know that uh, you know this is being done for publicity reasons, and uh, we have permission to to do so. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't go talking about people unless they said it was okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, just as um, an aside also, um, for compliance reasons and lots of other things for, our, for our, uh, the work that we do, every employee, including our interns and volunteers, also sign confidentiality agreements. So it's, it's very well covered and, and an area that clients can be, I think, very uh, comfortable with. Right, because if they're not giving us the information, it makes it harder for us to help them. So mm -hmm. they have to have confidence that this is not going to leak out anywhere. And just going a step further, if we have two clients that are very similar, we'll make sure that they're with different advisors uh, and not have one advisor for the same type of company mm -hmm. because it's very hard to forget something that you've seen mm -hmm. and say, well, you know, company A is doing this, you ought to think about this. Mm -hmm. So we try to have that as separate as, as possible, just, you know, for being ethical. Great. Okay, um, we're due for a short break, so we can, uh, that's a good point where we can stop and we'll come back after the break and talk about some of your other clients. Great, thank you.
that I can play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, so we do it. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1, called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Welcome back. Um, we were talking about success stories for the small business development centers here in Hawaii. And um, I'm going to ask Joe now to, to switch to a little bit different type of client and to tell us about um, things that we do in the medical field or with doctors and those kinds of people. Right. Well, this, this client it was interesting because of the social impact that they have. And we really like uh, larger projects like this that have some social um, impact, mm -hmm. as well as the financial impact. So this was for the Waianae Coast Comprehensive uh, Health Center on the west side of Oahu, which serves uh, an under, a medically underserved population, uh, many uh, Native Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And there's no hospital out there. This is the closest thing to a hospital that they have. So uh, a couple years ago, they were building a new clinic at a location where the old clinic was basically falling down. There were days when they couldn't use it because oh. it was leaking uh, from the roof. Hmm. So they undertook a campaign to uh, build a new clinic in that location. Hmm. And uh, as you know, the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture, has some very good programs for rural development. Yeah. You have to be in a rural area. Right. And uh, this was under the community facilities program. Uh, whereby the USDA will either give you the money in a, in a small grant and or direct loan the money to you or guarantee a loan through a, a lending institution. Um, and so when they do that, because the amounts tend to be a little bit higher, they often require a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we do uh, one or two of a year because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time to develop that. They tend to be very long and they tend to be very deep in the research that goes into it, primary and secondary research. Right. And so uh, we felt this was a good project to invest our, our time in, uh, strictly because of not only of the financial impact, but as I said earlier, about the social impact of having a a better place where people could go and get and get medical care. So in this case, uh, put together a team. We had uh, myself and uh, actually three other people, one intern, one volunteer, and then another staff member and myself. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was due in a very, very short time. So we really had a crunch on it and make it acceptable to the USDA and to the lending institution uh, so that they could get it approved and of course all the other approvals that would go along with it to be able to stick the shovel in the ground and start the construction mm -hmm. which I'm happy to say happened and um, it's on the way to fulfilling that purpose of helping the, the people on the west side to have a good place to go for their for their medical needs mm -hmm. uh, and this was a, a wonderful project in, in terms of the, the social impact as well as the financial impact. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and I, I know you mentioned that uh, it's largely a native Hawaiian population there. Correct. So uh, do you recall any numbers on how many people they can serve now as opposed to previously? Gosh, I don't have that at the top of my head, but I know that there were times Sorry. when that old <laughs> clinic was actually closed oh, right. because of trying to make repairs mm -hmm. or fix the leaks. And this one was larger, so definitely the capacity is, is larger and they're not gonna have the challenges with being uh, closed because this is a new 
a building. Mm -hmm. It's actually a shopping center, and it's completely new. Oh, okay. And so I don't think they're going to have the same challenges, and thus mm -hmm. they'll be able to have a higher capacity. Sorry, I don't have the, the oh, numbers. That's with okay. Me. Yeah. I should, I, that, like they say, don't ask a question you don't know the answer <laughs> to, right? Yes. Um, but at any rate, thank you for sharing that story as well. Um, and I guess just to, to go to a whole nother end of the spectrum of clients, um, I know that you've worked with many food type establishments, restaurants, um, bakeries, things right. like that. So maybe you can give us that example. Sure. So my impression of the economy here in Hawaii, and I obviously haven't studied it, but my impression is after doing this work for some years is that our market is, is very wide. I mean, we have a, a very wide variety of companies, but it's not as deep as some other places, let's say, on the mainland, just strictly because we don't have the population. So for us, the challenge is we have to be a lot of things to a lot of people, but there's not necessarily that many. Of course, when you get into food, food production, you know, bakeries, that kind of thing, there's definitely a good number. Mm -hmm. um, and so our challenge is to be a lot of things to a lot of people. So in this situation, uh, I had a client that I had been working with for actually a couple of years, and uh, she had been looking to buy a business. She was in a, a food business mm -hmm. and was not really able to do her own kinds of ideas, do her own things that she wanted to do. So she was looking to buy a business. and. We had strategized for a long time about what type of business was appropriate, what would be good for her to start. And then by luck, someone referred to me, someone who I knew but wasn't a client, said, uh -huh. hey, I want to sell my, my bakery business. Huh. So the light went on. I said, okay, you guys have to talk to each other. So there was a negotiation for several months. Um, we decided not to get the lawyers involved initially, but have come to a purchase agreement where the seller had the things that he wanted in the agreement and the buyer had the things that she wanted. And then at that point, the lawyers were brought in to make sure it was not um, not unfair mm -hmm. to one side or the other and sure. that both sides were having their interests protected. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they signed the purchase agreement and through an SBA loan, uh, courtesy of Central Pacific Bank, the transaction went through, and she has been operating the business now a couple years successfully. Great. And then uh, part of that engagement, other than the buy-sell part, was uh, making sure that her financial reporting system was robust. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a retail establishment, you have a lot of small daily transactions. You know, how do you account for those and make sure that everything is hitting your books and that you really understand your your costs and that you you know you have some some profit at the end of the day mm -hmm. you know, this is why you're you're doing this one reason anyway right so part of that was that and then uh, renewing a lease looking at the lease terms making sure that there was nothing in there that was going to be not advantageous to her and when you get a 60 page lease you know sometimes you don't know what's in there you don't know what the owners have maybe slipped in there inadvertently <laughs> or not, so right. you, you certainly want to go through that and make sure that your interests are protected. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other things we worked on were some of the ideas about social media, you know, uh, marketing effectively, segmentation, who are your, who are your buyers, mm -hmm. how do you reach them, what is the message, that kind of thing. And she was successful in selling to one of the larger department stores. And um, I mentioned earlier about the STEP grant, and mm -hmm. she's actually supplying uh, many cupcakes to the, to the working sessions, to the, to the workshops there. Oh, great. So that's kind of nice, too. Yeah. So that's been a very um, successful and happy kind of a situation where you have a business transitioning from one owner to another. And we've seen more of that in the last few years. I'm not sure why, but perhaps it's that uh, we're becoming more known as somebody that can help. Or during the recession in the 2008, 2009, there was some pent up demand and only now is that coming mm -hmm. out when things are improving. Banks are a little bit more disposed to lending when the economy is better, although they certainly make their individual decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a few things that are maybe happening. And I think last year we probably had four or five uh, business transitions like mm -hmm. this, either to another owner completely outside the company or to another generation, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. 
Right. So. Great. Well, that's that's very helpful. Um, we're getting a little bit close to the end. Can can maybe we talk about just in general the the range of clients who what kind of people you see and sure. what's most prevalent? Well, um, if I look at our NAICS numbers, our, 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 you know, the codes, mm -hmm. we actually work with manufacturing companies more than anything, and that's a little bit surprising here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. But if you think of a small food manufacturer or a soap manufacturer mm -hmm. or a candle manufacturer, those are definitely manufacturers. Somebody that's producing food is, you know, manufacturing or making food is considered to be a manufacturer as mm -hmm. well. So we probably have, you know, quite a few like that. Then you have accommodations. We have a lot in the accommodations uh, area, whether it's um, you know support for the businesses that are you know, guest oriented, you know, tours, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We do that. Um, we have uh, you know certainly a number of retail establishments, mm -hmm. which just runs the range. Um, and then of course uh, we have a, we have uh, some in the medical area where we have uh, doctors, dentists who are starting a new practice mm -hmm. and. You know, again, they don't necessarily have the financial background to, to do that, so we'll help them. The SBA has a very advantageous uh, loan for fixed assets, as you know, called the 504 program. Mm -hmm. right. um, and we've helped a number of uh, doctors, dentists, uh, physical therapists to pay for their equipment because it's expensive to start a of practice, course. sometimes mm -hmm. over a million dollars just to outfit a, an office. Right. Um, and they can get a very advantageous loan from SBA that is made for long-term assets. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the down payment is less, the terms are very favorable. So that's another, um, that's another option for, for the medical uh, people. Just along that line, we also did a couple of uh, urgent care clinics, mm -hmm. one on Kauai, one here. Uh, that's another way that people can save money, it's not necessarily going to an emergency room right. or a hospital for something uh, that would, could be taken care of by acute care in a, in okay. a acute care clinic. Well, great. So it just runs the gamut, I yeah. should say. Yeah, very interesting. You, um, I guess the types of businesses that we think of here often are not quite what you might expect. Exactly. But um, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, I'm my very happy that we had the chance to uh, share some of our success stories. And again, please, um, for the audience, please be sure to check our website, um, www.hisbdc.org. Um, on there, you will you have the ability to find out a lot more about us, um, all of the centers uh, statewide. Uh, you can sign up for counseling um, or for our workshops. So please um, take a look at that website and seriously think about um, coming to talk with us in person. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>